that mocha as they say in Dutch did I massacre it Dutch speakers get at me let me know let a bitch know I don't mind being corrected um, <laughs> um, I am in Bruges in Belgium uh, and in Bruges they speak mostly Dutch although they also speak French here lots of people speak English it's very cosmopolitan darlings um, I'm just having a little walk and I thought I would address you all because let's face it a great many of you do miss the times when I would walk and talk and I don't do it as much anymore mostly because I live right by the sea and I worry about the wind being so ridiculous by the sea that uh, you will not be able to hear anything I'm saying and it will have been a waste of a video that I put effort and love and time into filming right so I don't tend to do it that much um, it's actually very windy in Bruges today so I don't even know if this footage is going to be usable but it's not too windy so I'm going to try it out um, it's lovely to get away somewhere else you've never been and just give it a go and walk around and feel some feelings, write some poems, journal, get some food you don't usually eat, you know, sample the local vibes, the atmosphere, um, which here in Bruges is absolutely stunning, I will say. It's just beautiful here. Uh, it's renowned for that. You know, that's the number one thing people would say about it. Is it's absolutely beautiful breathtaking in fact um so oh look at this tree look at the roots stunning Ooh. gorgeous so i was thinking quite a bit this morning as i was walking about my healing journey so far as many of you know i am on one and it's pretty intense um for anyone who doesn't know i lost my darling brother my younger brother in march uh, very unexpectedly, very sad, very sad situation. Um, and since then, I've just been trying to live and trying to figure out how to deal with this uh, fucking catastrophe. And I wanted to posit some thoughts to you while I'm kind of having them to see if they can help anyone. And I'm not just talking about someone who's bereaved, I'm talking about those of you who are heartbroken, those of you who are feeling mightily depressed, those of you who have had things going on that have been really difficult to deal with, really painful, not having a very great time right now. If that's you, I'm right along with you darlings for this um, bumpy, achy ride. And so I wanted to talk about a few things I've been noticing about my healing journey and a few things that have struck me and a few things that have been really interesting that I did not expect whatsoever, you know? See if you can get anything out of it. And if not, then I got a video out of it and I got a chance to reflect on stuff, so I guess all is not lost, you know? One of the main very interesting things for me about my healing journey so far is that um, the pain that I've been going through, the shattering that I've been experiencing, um, has led me to a certain type of bravery that I don't think I've experienced that much in my life. I think of myself as a brave person in general, in terms of trying new things and 
scary, doing things that scare me, scaring myself a little bit, you know? Um, and I think I've had some opportunities in my life, certainly, to prove myself to myself, as it were. Um, but one thing I've noticed when you're incredibly, agonizingly, uh, um, devastated, is that you start to feel like you don't have that much left to lose, you know, like if it can get this bad, why don't I go and work a rock festival, like on my own, essentially, um, go and see some bands on my own that me and my brother used to love, do you love, I still do love, um, why don't I go into a nightclub on my own and dance all night, I've never done that, I've just done that this year, why don't I go to a gig on my own of a band that I like that I've never really shared with anyone, did that this year. <laughs> went on a dating site never been on a dating site before went on a date with a person I met on the dating site never done that <laughs> that was wild and, and nice um, just like random shit that I just don't usually you know that would be kind of like out of my comfort zone you know um, and not doing things the easy way so much like if there's an easy way to do something in a difficult way like for example here if you can ask someone if they speak English versus if you just have a go in Dutch, you know? <laughs> and then end up saying, uh, his spied me, uh, ben Engels. <laughs> uh, which is really funny because it means, I'm um, sorry, I'm English, which I hope they can imagine I'm putting a comma between I'm sorry and I'm English. Although if they think I'm saying I'm sorry, I'm English, then I guess that's also true. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, just just not doing things the easy way just kind of freaking yourself out a bit you know standing a bit closer to the ledge of life not in any negative way wanting to do it in a negative way you know I've been wanting to go back to my some negative old habits and some negative old ways of doing things and I'm sure you can imagine that that has been a temptation for me I know a lot of you know what I've been through and what I used to what I used to do to cope um, you know restricting food self-harming stuff like that I don't want to lean over the edge of life in that way. I want to do it in the positive, beautiful way. Uh, writing really daring poetry that I wouldn't normally put out there in public and actually putting it out there on my poetry Instagram and just being like, fuck it, that's what was in my heart. That's what I truly mean. You know, agreeing to carry on writing my book, um, which I think, oh, don't you love that language? Um, agreeing to carry on writing my book a few months after my brother died, I picked it back up again, which I think a lot of people wouldn't have done. I think a lot of people would have shelved it and that would have been an absolutely understandable choice. But for me, I was like, you know what, fuck it. I've started, so I'll finish. I know that he would be spurring me on to do that. I have a feeling that if the tables were turned and it was me to go first, he would have carried on with whatever project he was up to at the time. So there's a, there's a real strength and a real like scary courage that comes from being so hurt and so lost and so aggrieved you start to realize that you're not sure if you've got that much left to lose if you fuck it up or if you're wrong or if it ended up not being how you wanted it to be and that's really potent so if you can hang on to that if you feel any of that bravery um coming through and you're not sure what it is and it's making you feel a bit sick and you're like what is happening try and try and go like under the hood a little bit and see if it's actually daring the dark awe that comes from going through something so fucking shitty that you're like, you know what? This is it, and this is all, and nobody is guaranteed the next day, so fuck it. <laughs> um, I've noticed that about myself, and it does not ease my pain, but it helps me bear it, and I think there's a difference. I think there's a difference between having the pain ease, which it can't be. The only thing that would ease this pain, realistically, in any serious way would be Nick returning um, but in the in the reality of things that cannot happen um, he'll never be here again in his physical form so I have to drink in the spirit of so many of the things he loved which includes trees he loved trees he was a tree surgeon and he was a total nerd about trees okay way more hippie than a lot of people even watching this right total hippie but also not <laughs> it was really he was a, a beautiful array of paradoxes in one human body really very artfully he was an artfully done high caliber human and i miss him every single day 
And I feel like the pain of this has fueled me in some really interesting ways that I wouldn't have expected. And actually one of the things that used to really piss me off, to be honest, when he first died, and even now it pisses me off, except people say it a bit less, but when he first died, people would often say to me, I don't even know how you're standing up. If it was me and I just lost my brother and I was so close to my brother, I wouldn't even be able to talk. I wouldn't be able to stand up. I wouldn't be able to do anything. Look, and of course, it's all supposed to be a compliment, right? It's supposed to be like, look how amazing you are. You're doing all of this stuff. Like, wow, what the fuck? But what it made me feel like was that they were saying, you can't be in that much pain because if I was in this much pain, I wouldn't be able to do anything. I wouldn't be able to say anything. I wouldn't be able to work. I wouldn't be able to, you know, plan a trip. Um, and so I didn't like it. And I used to ask people that I was close to anyway, I would ask them to please stop saying that. It, it doesn't, it doesn't help. It's making me feel like my grief is being diminished. And actually I'm in an intense amount of pain, but you might as well be in an intense amount of pain in Bruges. <laughs> fuck it it's a it's really that feeling it's like oh my god well you know what if that can happen then i guess this is happening why not um i would say it's a nothing left to lose kind of energy and i i'm i know it does stun people especially people who've never lost anyone close to them really close truly just close like spoke every few days messaged all the time said beautiful things to each other all the time uh, if someone's never lost anybody that was that close to them, they do find it really rather wild um, that I'm doing some of the things I'm doing and that I've still grasped the year, you know? Um, and actually I would have found it quite wild as well. And I have before, I've got quite a few friends and family members who've lost someone terribly close. Um, and I have found it to be incredible and admirable, but also I've wondered if I could ever you know what I mean? I, and, I, and I thought I could never. But you know what? You can and you do. You can and you do. You just carry the fuck on. That's human. So maybe, my loves, if any of you out there are in a riveting amount of pain, um, an unjustifiably cruel part of your existence, you might want to scare yourself a bit. Scare yourself in a good way. Do something that you've been nervous about, something you've been putting off, something that's really taking your fancy, but so far you've only been able to tap into the resistances, you know, the arguments against it, the reasons why now isn't the time. Maybe thrill yourself, remind yourself that you've still got blood running through your veins, you're still alive, you still can, you know, it's a good feeling. Another thing that I have been really going through and recognizing recently is that you must take your support where you can get it. And sometimes it's not going to come from the avenues that you suspected it always would. You know, the people that you always thought would be the ones to come through for you, they may not be the ones to come through for you. In fact, they may be completely absent. And if they're not completely absent, they may be completely insensitive and actually frustrated that they have to give you the degree of support that they have to give you. Um, they may let you down, they may surprise you, they may shock you, they may make you feel a bit sick, actually. And you might think, wow, all the time and the effort and the energy and the love that I wove into the tapestry of our friendship, of our connection, and what for. And there is a lot of anger in that. There is a lot of sadness and disappointment in that, my loves. And no one can take away from you the, the process that you may need to go through to, to deal with that, you know? No one can deny that that's very tough. But at the same time, the avenues that you do receive support from will be luminous and they'll be surprising and they'll be refreshing. It will be energizing to you. And you'll think, wow, I didn't know this door was here. I didn't know this pathway led down there. How beautiful. Try and think of it like exploring a town and you always go to the same coffee shop or the same church or the same woodland space or whatever same swimming pool and it closes one day unceremoniously and doesn't even let you know and you're like oh fuck you then i had a membership there you know or i had a friendship group there and then you think to yourself oh well i'm still alive i've still got blood pumping through my veins i'm gonna go and see what else is out there what other parks what other gyms what other coffee shops and when you find them, you're like, oh, this is a lovely side street. I had no idea this was even here, you know? And you can actually 
be thrilled by that. You can enjoy that shit. And obviously in no way am I saying that you shouldn't process your anger and your hurt and your upset because you, you should and you can, you are allowed. Um, but I would say, because I know it's very hard not to drop anchor there, I guess that's why I'm saying to you now, you don't need to drop anchor there. You don't need to stay stewing in that crap. You don't need to keep wondering over and over and over again why, why somebody didn't call you, why somebody didn't bother with you, why somebody didn't say I'm so sorry or ask how you are before talking about themselves incessantly. That's their shit to work out, my darlings. That is their work to do. And you have to bring it back to yourself. What can you do? What is your next right action? Where is your agency? As I know, I've been bumming on about on this channel for years, but it's really the crux of it, right? So it always can bear to be repeated. What is your agency? Where is that? What's your next move, counsellor? So doing the anger though, about the people that haven't been there, that should have been, that could have been, that might have been, doing the anger is part of it. And in doing that anger, in feeling your feelings, remember two things I would say. The first thing is this, you do not need to share your anger with them. You do not need to express it to them. If you feel like it would be a lost fucking cause, don't do it. Don't do it, don't bother. You've got your journal, you've got your creative pursuits, you've got your ritual, your connection to spirit. You can do it there. You can do it through just sweating, you know, just going to the gym and sweating, sweating out getting your weights at home and sweating out, getting on the yoga mat, holding crow pose, and just, you know, letting it come out in the body because it wants to. That's a great way to get anger and frustration and confusion and fear out of yourself. Just sweat in however your capability allows you to sweat, clenching your fists, like flexing your biceps, whatever it might be. Even having a good stretch can actually be quite good for just feeling your feelings. Sometimes it doesn't take for you to have a journal session or whatever, you don't necessarily need that. Just do something to feel it, dance it out, scream it out, scream into a pillow. I'm, I'm fully an advocate of screaming into a pillow once or twice in a while, every once in a while. A little bit of primal screaming never hurt anyone. It doesn't even hurt the neighbors if you do it into a pillow. So, you know, definitely get your feelings out you don't need to share it with them and I'm saying that because honestly some people don't they're not even gonna to respond to that they're only gonna use that as further proof that their decision not to support you or be around you was correct in the first place you don't know where they are or what they're going through or why they decided to make the decisions they made about you and how much support they owe you so you don't know if you're opening a can of worms that you actually can't handle um, at that point in time if you're very low and also it's vulnerable in your anger in your confusion in your frustration in your pain you're very vulnerable and you don't fucking owe everybody your vulnerability you don't and it's not safe with everyone it's not safe and you have to think about your safety when you're feeling very low and very confused and very aggrieved you've got to think about your safety the second thing that I would say about being angry with people when you're very down and someone doesn't come through for you and you're very shocked by that is don't forget that you are allowed to forge a boundary based on that. The boundary does not have to be, I'm never going to talk to you again. I'm blocking your number and I'm blocking you on social media. You don't get to speak to me anymore. It doesn't have to be that, but it might be that. It really depends on the situation and nobody can tell you what the best course of action is for you when it comes to that. You may not want to decide when you are in the grip of the worst thing, you know, when you're as low as you can be, that might not be the best, most adequate time to decide what you want to do about this person who hasn't been there for you and their role in your life. You might want to wait and that's your prerogative, you can wait. But don't ever tell yourself that you're not allowed to reshape the borders of your connection with somebody based on how they were with you when you really fucking needed them because that is a good sign it's a good sign of how how true and how sure the relationship really is you might want to leave a door open for someone ex to explain to you why they haven't really been very there 
some people have really quite a good reason and they do feel very sorry and very sad and they would like a chance to explain and so maybe instead of acting very rashly when you feel like someone hasn't been the caliber of person towards you that they should have been you might want to give it some room and give it some breathing space in order to allow them to understand that they can come in and say later you know I'm sorry I wasn't around or I'm sorry I said that to you or I'm sorry I didn't say that to you whatever it might be but it's also a very very good indicator isn't it of how valuable a connection truly is when you thought it was valuable and you both certainly said it was valuable <laughs> to all intents and purposes you acted like it was valuable but they did not come through you know when the chips are down and the brown stuff hits the big whirly thing is that not the perfect time to see what a friendship's truly made of and if you feel like the, the friendship's been tested and it wasn't what it was supposed to be then indeed you might need to make your decisions and you're allowed to make your decisions that's not a bad thing it doesn't make you a bad person try never to forget that you are your friend also the caliber of your friendship with yourself is never more important to monitor and question and think about than when you feel at your absolute lowest. How are you treating yourself? Are you asking yourself what you need? Are you asking yourself what you want? Are you asking yourself what the worst case scenario would be for a particular day that you have to get through? Are you being honest with yourself about your requirements, about your health, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional? It's um, very, very difficult when we're at our absolute lowest point to still consider ourselves to be a friend. I know that. Believe me. Okay, I know that. I know that shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if it's been a while since you've taken a moment to assess how good of a friend you are to yourself, maybe do that today. I have not been a great friend to myself the entire time. But you know what? I talk to myself. I go into dialogue with myself. I look myself in the mirror and I say to myself, I'm sorry I talked to you that way. That wasn't appropriate. I'm sorry I treated you that way. Can we start again? I'm going for a really shit time right now, but I don't want to abandon you. I don't want to leave you behind. I love you and I'm sorry. I love you and I'm sorry. You can say that to yourself anytime you need. Anytime. Make sure you do. And if you think to yourself, I don't know if I'm really gonna believe that, Kellyanne. I don't really know if that's my vibe. Just try it out, please. If that's, if you're listening to this and thinking, I have nothing, I have no one, I'm stressed, I have no resources, start with a little bit of mirror work and just say anything to yourself. Just look at yourself and say, fuck, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm lost, I don't know what to do. I know some people prefer to just do this with journaling, but I think there's quite a place for mirror work as well, to be honest. So a bit earlier in this video, I was talking about how um, sometimes help might not come through for you in the way you expected or from the person that you expected, but it will come through in some other way. So don't, don't be afraid to sort of like look around the town, if you will. You know, if something closes down, if something isn't there for you anymore that you always expected to have, don't be afraid to look for another thing, you know? I wanted to talk more on that. Um, the ego, I think, is always super sure of where the help should come from and what help exactly is needed. And I think there's a fantasy notion of how I'm gonna get my support, who's gonna come through for me, where I'm gonna feel best, you know, what location I need to be in, what words people need to say to me, etc. And I think sometimes, like, well, let's use my, my situation as an example, right? I have made some really close friends in the last eight months um, who I were friends before but I wouldn't say were like super close that I would be really vulnerable with that are in my inner sanctum you know um, but actually they came through for me much more strongly than um, some friends who were closer and often professed to be closer and loved to make a big thing out of being closer to me um, but actually really were hurtful super super let me the fuck down all the way down to hell <laughs> um, and so I want to say that for a while like I didn't accept help from the places it was coming from because I was waiting for it from the places it should have been coming from you know 
I mean, look, as I said at the beginning of this video, no one can make this better. No one can make this better unless they can actually bring him back. Um, this is life. This is what we have to go through. This is what we have to bear. This is the majesty and the depravity of death. And I've always known that. I've known that for a long fucking time. Um, it was years and years and years ago now that my uncle Seth, um, who tragically is no longer with us. I lost him a few years ago. That was also incredibly fucking painful. A long time ago, he told me that some Tibetan monks meditate with nothing in the room except the skull of their master. And that is to reflect on how decay is inherent in everything that is component and the notion of death as the ultimate meditation. And I was a teenager when he told me that and I was astounded and really interested. That's probably where some of my interest in like thanatology first started and the idea of death as an archetype to be worked with, to be cherished, to be held close. And that was many moons ago now. Like I said, he's in spirit now himself. Um, so yeah, it was a long time ago that I knew that this is the dual nature of death, that it can be healing and alchemical, but you must go through the pain of it. To grieve is to have loved. If you never grieve anyone, you never loved anyone. Because when they go, it should hurt. <laughs> it should hurt. And it's right that I hurt now. That's, that's what I would have wanted, that's correct. It's a testament to my love for my brother that I'm in so much agony. <laughs> I'm in so much agony, it's funny. <laughs> I'm laughing about it. I mean, it really does get funny sometimes, honestly. It's, it's outrageous that I can hold this much pain in my tiny little five foot body. <laughs> um, but I suppose one of, what I wanted to say was uh, when that happens, you can be very sure and very certain of where your help is going to come from in so much as it can come from anywhere right because i know that ultimately i'm in pain and sometimes i'm going to feel alone whether anyone's there for me or not whether people are leaving beautiful things for me on social media or not and i really want to thank so many of you who've done that and who sent me condolences cards and beautiful emails and said beautiful things in the comments like i really really do appreciate that that means something to me those of you who were very sensitive and just said beautiful things to me thank you thank you thank you but, God, I'm really tangenting, guys. I'm tangenting hard. Um, I'm using tangent as a verb, and you love it. So, yeah, I wanted to say, don't let the ego convince you that because this person that you don't know very well suddenly has said, you know, I lost someone too, and I just want to say this and this and this, and you read it and you think, oh, wow, this person is really, really gets me and has really thought to reach out for me. Don't let the ego tell you, well, well, that's not one of my close friends. I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for them to come through for me. I'm waiting for that person that's let me down to finally show me that they care about me or whatever. Fuck that shit. You just get it where you get it. You know, if you feel comforted by somebody's presence, by somebody's words, by somebody but and even with this with things too right so let me not kill myself on on the road in belgium <laughs> the classic english tourist in collision with car because she was vlogging um yeah so if you if you look at certain resources for example like one thing i've realized during my grieving that's been fascinating right fascinating is that i'm very comforted at the moment by old stuff that i used to love that i'm returning back to a lot of my healing is so interesting a lot of my healing has been about things that i used to be really into like i've reordered sylvia plath's journals and i used to read them when i was a teenager I haven't read them since i was about 15 and i love them at the moment they're really helping me they're taking me on this journey again but from where i am now as a woman in her 30s fascinating i've been listening to loads of really old albums that i haven't listened to or appreciated for ages i'm remembering painters that i used to love and going back through and like looking at their stuff again <laughs> it's fascinating um it's just a beautiful feeling of like oh wow you know this stuff kept itself locked away somewhere in a room in my psyche and now i'm coming back to receive its medicine again from this new vulnerable scary fragile place and it's working it's helping and my ego probably was kind of no my ego was kind of like let's find something new let's be a new person let's get a new haircut let's find the thing that's got nothing to do with nick it's got nothing to do with your old life you know but actually that wasn't what i needed and it wasn't what i wanted at all i wanted to go back i wanted to go back to a warm 
safe cocoon but re-explore it from this new place and I had no idea that that was going to be a thing that would work or that would make sense I had no idea of that so just try to relax your grip on what you think would give you pause and solace and calmness and help and try and think maybe it would be going for coffee with that person who seems to understand what I'm going through but that I never really thought of as a close friend or maybe it would be returning to that thing that project that I put on the back burner years ago that maybe I want to come back to now maybe I want to finish it now you know who knows if you don't know and you're not feeling comforted you're not feeling safe you're not feeling like you're getting what you want take the road take the road that you're not sure of and be like well you know what it feels like it might be okay down there Okay, so we're in the we're in Markt now, which is the market square. And here behind me is the massive bell tower, which I went up yesterday. You can see that on my um, social media if you want to, on my Instagram, me up the tower, uh, listening to the bells chiming, which was quite something. A couple of people plug their ears, but to be honest with you, the bells have got nothing on some function ones. So me being to the amount of raves I've been to, I didn't mind. I'm still in Bruges, different day, hence the slight outfit change. I have a lot more things that I want to say, baby cakes, believe me. I'm backed up with thoughts on the healing journey. First of all though, it is stunning in this park. Here we go. Oh, how beautiful it is. Are you kidding me? Bloody gorgeous. Um, Okay, so emotions, feelings, they may happen in a really weird fucking order. They may not happen in the order that you expect. They may not happen in the order that you believe is right. There is no right way to have a set of very complex, very fractious, painful emotions. Despite what you have been telling yourself, despite what happened the last time you went through a healing journey, that was all relative to who you were then, what resources you had available then, what was going on in the wider world then, who you were as a person, the, the skins that you shed along the way, you know. Um, so try not to shame yourself for the time it takes you to deal with an emotion, the way in which it comes up, or whether or not you think it's weird or untimely or unfair or you didn't expect it. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to just sit with emotions as they arise. I'm trying to recognize that my desire to over-intellectualize a specific emotion um, is actually a desire to, to run away from the emotion itself, to put some kind of protection between me and the emotion. Um, maybe even just to deny that it is happening. And so instead I'll do this thing where I you know, try to figure out why it's happening and try to place it um, in some kind of logical context. And actually, you know what, feelings are just gonna come up. I'm gonna feel angry, I'm gonna feel guilty, I'm gonna feel scared, I'm gonna feel um, exhilarated by what is happening to me and who I'm becoming. I'm gonna feel um, resentful, I'm going to feel disappointed. 
I'm going to feel angry again. I'm going to feel blind fucking rage um, at things that it's not logical for any rage to be directed towards. I just have to sit with each emotion, you know, and not let the ego tell me that there needs to be this defined time that certain emotions come up, not let my ego tell me that there is a time by which I should be done with a specific emotion, um, not let my ego tell me that I'm doing something wrong. You know, sometimes I think the only job that I have is to get from hour to hour to hour, minute to minute to minute. Sometimes that's how it feels, you know, the gargantuan effort that it takes to just go through the minutes in the day. And I think that if I cannot actively, um, if I cannot, if I don't feel at a certain point like I can actively heal myself or actively care for myself, then my job is simply to not harm myself. You know, I'm seeking neutrality towards self. And part of that neutrality comes from just riding these weird waves and saying, okay, this is an interesting wave. That's kind of a way that I do it as well, babes, when I'm feeling very all over the place and healing is happening and it's taking all kinds of different roads and I'm in all kinds of different states. I start to over-intellectualize, unfortunately, you know, really sort of going to the going to the sensible part of why is this happening and what does it mean and what were the things that led up to it there's a place for all of that there really is a place for all of that but I tend to try and do it in a way where I'm running away from the emotion so I try and sit with the emotion instead I try and switch gears on myself and sit with the emotion instead but the other thing that I do is I try to be interested in what is happening that is weird and different and uncomfortable rather than be judgmental of it I try to go oh that's interesting why am I fearful of that now that's interesting why do I why do I want to be angry towards this person why do I feel angry towards this person who hasn't technically done anything that's interesting why do I feel like this is actually um I don't know there's loads of examples I could give I think I give too many examples in videos I know I do anyway that's how I talk I'm very authentic in my videos okay I talk in my videos the way I talk in real life and any of my cl my clients, my many, many thousands of clients over the course of time will tell you exactly that. When it's my turn to talk, darling, there's no difference, okay, to what you see in videos, apart from that I shut up because I need the client to be able to talk as well, obviously. I need to do my listening bit. Um, but yeah, I try to just be like, oh, that's interesting, that's intriguing. Okay, I'm, I'm the pupil. I'm the pupil of my emotional spectrum right now. Let me lean in, let me, let me listen closely to what is happening. And if I can't make head nor tail of it, I'm going to find that interesting as well. I'm not go going to berate myself for not being able to understand, for not being able to rationalize and intellectualize it. I'm going to go, okay, I don't understand. And that's weird. And there's a lot of God in that. There's a lot of divinity in that. The mystery, the mystery with a capital M of why a specific emotion is occurring. You know, I mean, let's face it, honey bunny, some emotions can't be named anyway. They're such weird little odd mixtures of different things um and they are hard to actually put words to so a lot of the time i find i'm pressuring myself to describe what i'm feeling as well i know that some people are better at that than other people people have different um relationships to their emotional spectrum and i know some people watching this um can't actually name their emotions as well as other people watching this anyway but i'm myself as an individual I'm actually very good at naming how I'm feeling and describing exactly how I'm feeling and what kind of um fucking combination of things is happening there so when I can't I feel very odd <laughs> and I start to get really frustrated with myself and uh you know it's good not to do that it's good to um just let it go and say oh okay well that's a really weird little mixture of things can't explain it can't place it and uh, that's fine, you know. There's lots of conkers around here, so I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to slip on a conker and die horribly. <laughs> what a terribly understated death that would be. Died of a conker in Bruges. <laughs> um, it's almost charming, actually. It's got a quaint death. Um, yeah, so essentially, you know, look, this is the thing. You're going to have some weird little crumbly, odd textures of emotion and you're not going to be able to always know why they're happening you're not going to feel comfortable you're not going to feel some of them are not going to be your finest fucking hour and also some of them can't even be named they can't be readily identified that's one of the reasons i love keeping a journal so much as well because um 
it relieves me somewhat of the pressure that I put myself under and that sometimes people in my life put me under I think this is true of most people right the pressure to explain the pressure to say how you're feeling the pressure to know what you're going through which actually especially during a really ridiculously painful healing journey you don't you don't know how you feel and it's okay um and so I think the journal is good because you can literally just open it up and be like ah, I don't know how I feel and just work through it um my mum wants to start a journal and recently she said to me I feel a lot of pressure starting a journal because I know it's going to be a whole new phase of me it's going to be a whole new part of my life it's going to open me up to all this stuff you know and I'm going to be different and so I feel like I can't start it I feel resistant and I said to her mum you're not going to be a new version of yourself whatsoever you need to take that pressure right off of yourself it's got nothing to do with being a new version of you shedding your skin or any of that you're just going to write whatever fucking shit you is in your head anything you want to write you know and I said, you can start by saying, this is weird, I don't know what to write. I've never done this before. Oh, it's crazy. It's like being on a new ride at the fair, <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like just whatever, you know, you can, you blah your way through it. You puke your way through it. God, these trees are stunning. How does anybody get anything done? The trees in the world. God, look at this beautiful tree. Look at it, baby. Stunner. Um, yeah, so I just sort of said to her, take that pressure off. It's got nothing to do with, because I was worried that what she was basically pressuring herself to do was to perfectly explain everything. To start at the beginning, perfectly explain every emotion, you know, really sort of like artfully communicate. And why? That's not what the journal is for. The journal's putting you under no pressure. The journal just wants you to use it for whatever purpose you intend. If you haven't seen my recent journaling video yet and you're thinking this sounds like an interesting thing maybe i need to journal go to that video i'll leave it linked down below lots of journaling tips for you i'm a huge proponent of a journal um and it's well worthwhile i will say so you know sometimes i like a journal because i i don't want to have to explain i don't want to put myself under pressure to explain i actually can't explain so that's the end of that but with the journal i can just write whatever the fuck, and I'm trying to find my way, do you know what I mean? I'm trying to like find my way around, and it's very hard, um, but it doesn't matter ultimately. I can let myself have that exploration. One thing I would suggest, my loves, is to choose a realistic aim for the day and make it heroic, because it is heroic. If you're going through some real fucking mad difficulty right now, then whatever your realistic aim is, is heroic. You might have many realistic aims through the course of the day. You might say, okay, my next realistic aim is just to make tea. I'm just going to get up and make a cup of tea. You might say, my next realistic aim is to put some washing on. My next realistic aim is to read my child a bedtime story. That is the aim. Try to not, you know, see this illustrious plan in front of you if you know that's making you overwhelmed, you know. I have really, really shaved down the perspective on every day for, for the next for the next few months and for the last few months that's been really it you know my next realistic aim is the next thing I have to do um, sometimes the next thing I want to do but like everybody I have responsibilities in life I have to make money I have to do stuff you know um, I have to clean my teeth <laughs> I have to make a few phone calls every now and again you know what I mean so I just think of it like that I try not to think about how I want the month to look how I want the year to look and you know if you've been around me for any length of time on the channel you know that I'm actually big into like oh my words of the year and you know doing a monthly review and really looking at how things went from one full moon to the next or one calendar month to the next but but you know as much as I love doing that sometimes that's intensely overwhelming right now in my life that's very overwhelming and I'm really just more about thinking about how the last hour went checking in with myself about that reminding myself as well at the same time that every new hour or every new five minute stretch or whatever can be a different decision you know I think everybody's had that experience where they get to midday and they go oh I fucked it up never mind I'll, I'll do better tomorrow fuck that up hey ho I'm just going to carry on you know like you have a day off for example 
you've got all these plans and you want to have a certain attitude for the day and you want to do certain things and then you get to a certain point you haven't done those things it hasn't worked out and you go oh I fucked it up never mind I'm just gonna just gonna binge watch Netflix now but that wasn't what you intended and it's not what's making you feel best if it is making you feel best by the way just carry on there's nothing wrong with a good Netflix binge don't let anyone make you feel ashamed of that um, my preference if I'm going to binge watch something is that I actually made a decision beforehand that that was what I was going to do. I don't want to slip into binge watching Netflix or YouTube or whatever. Um, I want to schedule time for that. I want to feel like, yeah, you know what, at four o'clock I'm just going to stop everything and I'm just going to watch some films or whatever, um, rather than slip into it because I'm trying to avoid what I would prefer to be doing or what I feel like needs to get done or I'm going to be stressed, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I think for me, it's been very small portions of time that I have looked back on and reviewed rather than thinking, what do I want for this whole month? What do I want this whole week to be about? I can't do that right now. I can't choose the action that is going to be heroic for you. And if for you, that is getting out of bed. If for you, that is making that phone call you've been afraid of. If for you, that is just... Um, having a different attitude towards something for a minute to see how it feels do that another thing I've been doing a lot lately that that definitely sort of coincides with my healing and has been helping me with my healing a lot is I write what not to do lists or not to do lists yeah so <laughs> instead of writing a to do list I will write a not to do list and that is all the things that I'm not going to be doing I don't have time I don't have the inclination they're not the most important thing the reason I do this is because I think a lot of the time a to do list especially when you're going through something really difficult like I am right now, a to-do list can be, it can just have a lot of crap on it that actually doesn't need to get done. I would like to be able to do all those 12 things or whatever that I've written on my to-do list. Yes, I would like that very much. Um, is it realistic? Probably not. Is it putting more stress on me and giving me more of a sense of pressure? Probably. <laughs> is it actually a bit unkind towards myself to have that many things on a to-do list at this point in my life when I'm going through all this shit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say probably again, but it's a yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I tend to instead think, okay, what am I willfully going to choose for my own, for my own healing, for my own sense of kindness towards myself? What am I going to choose not to do today? And I will literally just say, okay, well, I'm not going to do the dishes today, or I'm not going to do the dishes this morning. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not going to get back to that message right now because it's stressing me out and I know it's going to take a while and I'm going to have to re-listen to the message that they sent me and meh, so I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, I'm not going to do some laundry today. I'm not going to whatever it might be. Um, and, you know, sometimes I think that helps quite a bit. Sometimes I set myself very big goals with work. You know, I love what I do for a living. I'm, I'm really passionate about my business. I'm passionate about the things that I produce. Um, I'm passionate about it all. I'm passionate about the posts I write on Instagram. I'm just passionate about it all. A lot of it is sharing things that I hope are gonna be helpful to people and I hope are gonna put people in a better mood or I hope will allow people to shift their mindset on its axis or give them some sense of hope or some sense of beauty or whatever. And so a lot of it is really important work for me. Some of it is just sharing what I've done for the day or whatever, but a lot of it is a part of my important work. Um, keeping on top of my inbox is important to me you know all these things um, and I kind of feel like that's a big area in which deciding what I'm not going to do what is on my not to do list has been really important I've put massive emphasis on that in the last few months because my list of things to do can get a bit ridiculous and I tell myself in my head oh this is just a list of options for things I can do I don't have to do them all but if they're there on a to-do list and they sit there day after day after day not being done because I can only handle the next thing in front of me I probably am going to start to feel a bit shit about that list I was going to dye my hair before I came to Bruges and I decided that's not on my to-do list I'm taking I'm putting that on my not to-do list <laughs> Um, I was going to organise all of my tarot decks, put everything back in the tarot corner and organise it all into tarot and oracle. That was a lovely idea that wasn't really fucking realistic. You know, it took me three times as long to just choose what I wanted to wear here because I'm not in a good place. I'm not in a good headspace. You know, things are taking me longer. I'm tired more of the time. I'm grieving. I'm bursting into tears randomly. 
you know, I've been getting myself into a good headspace for my clients. That needs to be done. That's my work. That's my passion. And I love that. And when I'm speaking to a client, I'm speaking to a client and that's all I'm doing. I'm not processing my grief and things like that. Um, but in order to do that, I have to work around myself. I have to give myself longer times to prepare and um, I have to give myself a lot more understanding and a lot more sort of like chill time between clients and stuff. So there's a lot more things on my not to do list and that's been really good, that's felt good. I'm gonna walk back to my hotel now, Baby Cakes. Um, I'm going to wake up my darling friend I've traveled with and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna haul ass before the checkout time. Um, and then see what we want to do in Bruges before we leave. So I'm going to leave it here. But one more thing that I will say that's been really helpful for me is I want to put a good ripple into the weird water of this world. In other words, I want to make some sort of a difference. And it doesn't have to be a great big resounding, you know, legacy defining difference. I just want to maybe take one aspect of my personality that I like to think is an aspect of my personality that I want to nurture and I want to I want to exhibit in some way and then I take that personality trait and I think how can I put a good ripple onto the weird water of this world is how I like to think of it if I think of myself as creative how can I be creative in the world would it be leaving a piece of anonymous art for somebody somewhere so they can find it and get a warm feeling you know would it be leaving a really creative kind comment underneath someone's social media post um, would it be thinking of something for someone that they would really love and sending it to them? If I think of myself as generous, how will I put a good ripple out into the weird water? Will I give some money to a homeless person today? Will I talk to them and make conversation with them? Find out a little bit about their life? Will I donate to somebody's fundraiser? You know, um, will I ask somebody if they need something from the shop if I'm going to the shop? Will I carry somebody's bag for them on the way to the station? Maybe. Um, you know, that kind of thing. I just try to think, if I am these things, how can I be these things, but in ways that are manageable and lovely and in ways that hopefully um, leave a different energy from the one that I found when I got here. Darlings, I hope whatever you're going through, that this video was helpful, it gave you some warmth maybe, made you feel less alone. I commend your strength and I commend your steadfastness in this really difficult time so much love darlings and blessed be mm.